right, good to go. So, hello everybody and welcome. Uh, we are here with Anastasia Valentine, Chief Revenue Officer at Wagepoint, uh, one of our exhibitor companies at, te at Tech Jobs Fair today. So, how are you, Anastasia? I'm doing great. I love seeing all the thumbs up and the hearts and the yeah. clap. Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> it started already. Yeah, people are very friendly here. So, <laughs> Wagepoint. Uh, uh, really short is a fintech company on a, a mission to simplify play, a payroll. And uh, you've got a presentation for us uh, today. Um, sure. Would you like to share it with us? Let's see if we have it rolling. And then I'll leave the stage to you. Let's get this up and running. There we go. And Shazam, you should see the first slide. Can you just confirm? Yes. Investing in culture, diversity, and EQ. Yeah. Equality. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, I I'm ready to get started if you are. Stage is yours. I'm just gonna disappear for a while. <laughs> Bye. Amazing. Well, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for making the time out of your, your busy days. I know that uh, we're all busy people these days, so I appreciate you um, making the time. I'm Anastasia Valentine. I'm the CRO at uh, Wagepoint. And, uh, you know, payroll specifically is not all that sexy, but getting people paid is really important and really awesome. So that's what we do. We make sure that small businesses can um, pay their people in a really easy way. So that's what we do. But today I'm going to be talking about some really key investments from a business perspective, but also if you're in the market for a new career, things that you should look for maybe in your next career um, jump or your next career progression. So when you think about business investments, um, people talk about buildings, they, they talk about process, and they talk about the supply chain and all kinds of really, you know, kind of big in investments. But when, when I think about the foundational business investments, that's really about creating an amazing culture, celebrating diversity within your walls and outside your walls as well, and making sure you're developing a culture of high EQ. So that's also known as EI or emotional intelligence or emotional quotient. But let's start by creating company culture. And a lot of people talk about it. You, you probably see mission statements and value statements and, and purpose statements, but there's so much more to that. If you're creating a company or looking to, to join a company, I think it's really powerful to understand what's the story? What do, you, what do you know about the company? Why did it start? What made those founders say, hey, I have an idea and I want to make this bigger than what I am? And that's a really great way to start when you're creating your company culture or if you're aligning yourself from an employee perspective with a company, finding out what motivated the founders, how they, they brought in talent, how they attracted new talent to their, to, their, um, to their brand, and what do they stand for? This is a really important way to, to celebrate and to communicate your why. I'm sure you've heard that before. So what is your why? Why do you exist and who do you serve? And I saw this on, on the internet the other day. It's actually created by a company called Image Farm. And it's, it's this graphical um, facilitation of a company culture. And it really resonated me where it identified those top pillars, those things that are really important to, to a company, like their people, like their leadership. But then if you look in a little bit more into to some of this great artwork, it's so much more than just artwork. It talks about supporting you know, the team to take risks and not being afraid to fail or not having a dress code and being individual um, and then really celebrating everything that people bring to the table, but then also making sure that people have work-life balance where they can, the people that they hire are adaptable to change, where they care for one another. Um, and, you know, when you think about corporate speak, very rare do you hear about, you know, do the employees care for one another? What a great concept, you know, caring for the person that you work with. I think that's really important. You don't have to be best buddies, but caring for the people you work with and caring about your mission and caring about the company culture goes a long way in creating a place where people want to work. Now, Zappos is one of my, my favorite companies out there in terms of how they've defined this for themselves. They call it the, the family core values. And I think it's important for companies when they're creating their core values to align with them and not just talk the talk. This isn't just about a slide that you put up or a piece of a, of a website, some copy that you write. It's about really aligning with the things that are most important to your company, what makes your company tick, 
what you want to see out of your people. But then also, you know, you have to stand by that and also sometimes be prepared to defend it. There are some really great values here. I love the idea of delivering wow through service. I mean, as, as a consumer, that feels great to me. Um, having, you know, a company that can embrace and drive train change. And I love, you know, giving people the flexibility to, to have a little fun and, and a little bit of weirdness. I mean, um, I ask people sometimes when I interview them, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how weird are you? And that's really disarming or alarming, depending on who they are. But usually we have a laugh and it, it really allows people to be a little bit more open. Uh, we run on the spectrum of like a nine out of 10 on the weird scale at, at wage point, but we love it. Um, being adventurous, pursuing growth. These are all things that, you know, I would like you as an employee um, to, to look at in your or own organization or in your next step. And as an employer, be prepared to, to share these values. So if a, a potential prospective employee asks you, what are your core values? You should have those really, you know, down to like those top three, the three things that are really important to you. Zabos went here um, and did 10 of them. That's great. Um, but really, you know, understanding your values and standing by them, you know, walk the walk and talk the talk. And I think from a business perspective, I mean, I, I am responsible for revenue. So, so I do think about, you know, our customers and revenue and, and having all of those um, puzzle pieces really come together. And Simon Sinek said it, said it best, I think, where customers will lo never love a company until the employees love it first. And this is so important. You know, if you have a company where people are unhappy, no matter what you do, it will show. It will show in your productivity, it will show in your products, and it will show in you know how your company is portrayed. If your people are happy, they'll be happy to come to work, they'll give a little bit more, they'll give it their all. And you know, loyalty right now in a situation where you know jobs are plentiful in in you know our, our sector, certainly tech is booming booming. Um, getting people to love the company that they work with is super important for business strategy all around. Now, let's talk about creating a culture of diversity. And, you know, we'll, I'll talk a little bit. I'll give a really funny analogy here. Um, if I think about a company that I would create, uh, think about this bowl. You know, I could put some lettuce in it. Lettuce, you know, and if I just leave it with lettuce, eh, that's okay. You know, some people like lettuce. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not shaming anyone for liking lettuce. But is it enough? You know, do you have enough if you just have lettuce? Well, maybe you want to get a little bit more adventurous. Maybe you want to welcome some depth of flavor. You know, maybe you want to welcome something that's a little bit more pleasing to the eye, a little bit more interesting. And you know what? That that's okay. You know, if you want a full salad, that's awesome. Um, but you're, what we're missing here is the connection. We're missing an experience. So I think we should just go and go all out and have an entire dinner party. And if you're creating a company, so if you're creating just like a dish, go for the dinner party because it gives you so much more. It gives you conversation. It gives you connection. It brings people who bring their life experiences to the table. Differences of opinion, sometimes even spirited debates because we're not always going to get along, but we can listen to each other and we can appreciate each other. And this kind of approach is the kind of approach that will allow people to connect. And it's really all about connection and appreciation. So I, I want to introduce you to, to Team WagePoint. You know, we've got people from all over the world. And when I, I did the call out to the team, I said, listen, I, I'm doing this talk about WagePoint and, and kind of our culture and diversity. This is what um, they came up with. They, I said, give me pictures of you doing things you love. Um, some people gave headshots and then some people you really kind of captured their whimsy behind it. But, you know, on the service, this is very cosmetic. You see our, our differences, you know, at a cosmetic level. But what you don't see is diversity even at a deeper level. So, for example, we've got people from all over the world. With that brings many, many cultures, many, many life experiences, many opinions, many approaches and ways of doing things. And that is really great to allow us to consider the unconsidered. Because it's been my experience that if you put people with like characteristics in a room to solve a problem, they'll come up with a solution. They'll probably come up with it really fast and they're probably all going to agree. Um, it might not be the best solution. So if you put people with different characteristics in a room to solve a problem, they're gonna be in there for a long time and that's okay. 
they'll come up with different ideas. They'll have different experiences that they'll bring to the table. They'll have different outlooks. They'll have things that we never would have considered. So by bringing everybody together, we're actually creating a rich experience, a more creative experience, and probably a better solution all around. Now, another thing that you don't see from, from these photos is that we have diversity in, in age. You can kind of get the gist there, but we actually have people from just right out of school to someone who retired last year. And retiring in tech, I mean, you usually don't see that unless it's an exit. But yeah, so we had someone who retired. So bringing that, that depth of experience is important to us as an organization. Um, in addition, we are a fully remote company and we have been for 10 years, like over a decade before it was even cool, before it was even a thing. So we have worked really, really hard to keep connections with everyone and to connect with people who offer, you know, the best, the, their best selves and the experience that we need. It really doesn't matter where they're located or who they are. They just have to be able to, to do the job. And we have people who are in, you know, urban centers, you know, right smack dab in a condo in the city. Um, we've got people obviously in suburbia. And we've got people who are in rural locations. We even, I don't know if you can see, um, Denise there, you know, in, in her, her nature, she does her best genius work in a yurt. So, you know, that's just really cool that people can work where they're comfortable. They can express themselves in the way that they do best. They can work, you know, in an autonomous way or a way that really contributes to, to teamwork. Um, but I think the most important thing is to say, when you're looking at diversity, first, if you see it, you can be it. And that kind of thing is, is important to attract the kind of talent that you want to, or, to your organization. Because if people can, don't see themselves, you're, listen, you're losing out. You're losing out on some tremendous talent that won't otherwise approach you. And I think in addition, not letting geography be a barrier to talent is important to be able to get the best talent, the best people. That's something that we look forward to as well. So diversity isn't just about what people look like. It's important, but it's also a depth of that or even deeper than that to provide those life experiences, those different points of view without geographical barriers and to bring everybody together to the table to not only have a voice, but to contribute. And again, I'm putting my revenue hat on here. Um, I was looking at this article by the Boston Consulting Group, and they said that having diverse management teams actually can generate up to 19% higher revenues due to innovation. And that goes back to my, my um, talk about, you know, having like people in a room coming to a solution, and then people with different char characteristics coming to a room to find a solution. There's more creativity, there's more innovation. So Diversity itself is not just that metric to be strived for is what they say, but is a part of your successful revenue generating business. And I think it's just good business in general. So let's talk a little bit about EI as a new BI. So EI being emotional intelligence um, and BI being business intelligence. Sometimes when you think of business intelligence, we're thinking about graphs and, and uh, you know, spreadsheets or, you know, um, cubes and, and slicing and dicing data. But having the emotional intelligence is actually a huge business and personal asset. So, so what is it anyway? It's, it's really important for us to understand what EI or, or EQ is. If, if you think about yourself and your emotions, you are one beautiful package and your emotions come with it. And sometimes we're stressed and sometimes we're up and sometimes we're down. And all of that really plays into how we do our best work and how we live our best life. And that sounds really cliche, but it's true. So emotional intelligence really are those checks and balances that allow us to manage our stress, to understand how we are perceived, to understand how we can most more effectively express ourselves, make great decisions, and leverage those interpersonal relationships and foster those relationships. All of this is a complete package. And, you know, at, at WagePoint, we actually teach this, you know, teach teach techniques to how do you understand your emotions? Uh, how do you know when you're going to a place where you might need to step back? When should you listen versus talk? Uh, when should, how can you navigate, you know, conflict, especially if you don't agree with someone? Um, all these ways to, to get through those, sometimes, you know, conversations that people try to avoid. And most importantly, 
being empathic um, and really empathizing with others. Empathy goes a long way in managing all of this when it comes to your relationships at work, to your relationship with yourself, your relationship with others and customers as well. So we, if we look at uh, kind of the four pillars of, of EQ or AI, um, self-management. So you know what, like I said, you know, we're always going to have emotions and those can be good and bad, but how can we manage those in a very healthy way? Um, especially at work where it's really important, but I think it's, it's important to note also that, you know, a lot of us, part of our identities, identities are work. We enjoy what we do. It's part of who we are. And sometimes we completely separate that. But one thing that crosses those boundaries are our emotions. So being able to manage them in a healthy way and regulate yourself as you, you know, have those interactions on a high day or an off day and recognizing, you know, how it makes people feel is, is, a, is goes a long way. Um, sometimes we just want to do things. We just like, oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it right now. And that's especially, you know, in what they call that heat of the moment. Um, nothing great is done in the heat of the moment. Let's be honest. It's always good to take that moment and, and to, to think, to breathe. Um, I used to coach people to do, you know, 7-Eleven breathing. Seven counts in, 11 counts out until you can really think clearly. And then you can take action or make a plan. Um, following through on your commitments. You know, nobody likes someone who's flaky. Let's always follow through on your commitments or communicate if you can't follow through for whatever reason. In the tech sector, you know, there's change all the time. And especially in the last two years, it's been crazy. You know, there's been personal change, there's been emotional change, there's been technology changes, and there's been changes the way we do business. So the ability to adapt to those changes in a very healthy way is, is you know, going to be in everyone's favor, whether it's at work or at home. Um, relationships is what makes the world go round. So we want to develop and maintain positive relationships. And sometimes that's recognizing when a relationship no longer serves. And that's, you know, in, in a personal life. But at work, what do we do if that happens at work and we're not getting on with someone? How do we manage that relationship? Well, EQ techniques will actually help you navigate that. You never have to be best buddies with someone, but sometimes you do have to work with them and have that level of understanding the ability to communicate clearly and effectively. Sometimes, you know, especially when emotions come into play, um, you get all muddled up or you get, you know, hyped up and, and it's hard to communicate the things that you want. Um, but I think what's equally important is also being aware of how things are being received. Because if you're upset or if you're really passionate about something, we still have to recognize how it's being received because it might not, being re might not be received in the same way as we intend. Um, the ability to inspire and influence others. Um, not everybody wants to do this, but, you know, sometimes the power of influence is really important with, you know, customers or with getting things done or, you know, in the tech world, you know, let's say you have a bug or a feature you want to implement or, or something that could be really strategic to the company. How do you inspire and influence someone to get that done? So when you think about that and think about the, you know, the facts and how do you communicate those facts to support your position? And then working as a team and managing conflict. You know, conflict is not a bad thing. Conflict is just a cue to say, hey, let's talk about this. Or, hey, maybe we can collaborate. Or, you know, let's, let's look at our conflict. Let's dissect it and analyze it. And what a great way to get to know someone. I know never, people don't ever think about that. But what a great way to really understand someone and maybe even turn that conflict into a friendship. Um, Self-awareness, again, know how our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors affect everything that we do. Knowing our strengths and weaknesses, you know, when do we want to um, bring someone in to, to, to do a job? I know that I look at my team and uh, I think about, uh, sorry, I'm just getting rid of my, this one. Um, I look at my team and I try to bring people in who are smarter than me especially in certain areas where I am really terrible at things. So really understanding, you know, what you're really good at and what you're not really good at. And if you want to, you can focus on the areas that you want to improve. But being honest with yourself about your limits, your current limits, because they won't always be limits, um, and then some of your strengths where you can also help others.
and having that confidence, you know, don't sell yourself short. Um, you're all here because you either are building a company um, and looking at different ways that you can you can grow and scale, or you're looking for your next big thing. So have that confidence because you've come a long way, even if you're a new grad or if you've been in the business for years, have the confidence you've earned it. And then finally, with social awareness, have empathy. That is the best thing you can have in your back pocket understanding where other people are, how they're receiving what you're saying, you know, just because, you know, someone may react to you in a certain way, maybe there's something going on that you know nothing about. And I think we have to appreciate that, especially in these last two years where things have been tough for people. Um, so have some empathy and develop that understanding. And then, you know, pick up on those emotional cues. Sometimes it's hard. Some people are, are, are more forthright than others um, in terms of giving those cues. Like, this is not okay, or oh, I'm checking out. I'm not listening to you anymore. Um, or, you know, where they're really, really keen or they disagree. But recognize those and use those to develop a deeper understanding and deeper conversation. And look at the power dynamics in a room or in an organization. Are they healthy? Um, is it kind of lopsided? Is there an imbalance or is it evenly distributed? Does everyone have power in some right? I think it's, it's, it helps an organization if you're able to recognize these power dynamics. And in some cases you might have to diffuse them. In some cases you might have to give other people power who didn't have power before. And in some cases, you know, you just have to empower everyone. And I think by doing that, you will get so much more out of your employees and you will get so much more for your organization. So that was like a whirlwind, but my takeaways for you today are create a company culture with purpose, shared values, engagement, and everything else will follow. And if you're looking for a job today or any time in your career, look for the company who not only talks about their culture, but demonstrates their culture and stands behind it. Um, this I am fully and a thousand percent committed to. Diversity wins every single time. It is strategic. It is good business. It's being a good human. So make sure that, you know, if you're a company, you have diversity. You are attracting people and you're not selling yourself short and missing out on some incredible talent. And if you are looking to join a company, um, ask them about this. Don't be afraid to do this in the interview process. Ask them about what their strategy is and how what they do to foster diversity within their walls. And then finally, emotional intelligence is something worth looking into. It helps us all personally and professionally, but from a professional standpoint, it is the new business intelligence and it can go a long way. So I wanted to, to thank you all for, for joining me in this, this short little time. I, I'd love to take some of your questions, but before that, I'd like to let you know that we are hiring and we are scaling. So these are just some of the, the roles that we have available at wagepoint.com. If you go to the footer and then click on the career section, they're there. But if you don't see something that you're interested in here, send us your resume anyway. We wanna get to know you because as we do scale the organization, we've got some very aggressive goals over the next two years um, and you're going to see this list um, you know, intensify and get much larger. So um, get your resumes in now. We'd love to hear from you. Great. Thank you once more, Anastasia. That was a great talk. I took a lot of uh, notes. I like the word empathy that you used several times. I think it's something so important. Um, diversity wins every time. I like this as well very much. Let's go to some Q&A. Uh, from um, the poll that we have here, uh, we have a couple of questions. There is someone that asks, from a job seeker's perspective, looking for companies with great cultures, which is the deciding factor? The way team members treat, treat each other or the way the company treats employees? Um, they both are important, but what would you say on this? Oh, wow. You know, it's not one or the other. It's, yeah. it's, you know, because if people are not treating each other well, in general, there's a problem. And there have been actually been studies saying people who have poor cultures, there's something else going on there that is not quite right. So um, ask if you get those spidey senses, and we are all going to get them, um, trust your gut and ask the questions. Um, you'll be glad that you did. So if you are, are seeing that, that there's something that that someone treating someone that in a way that you wouldn't want to be treated, you rest assured that will happen um, if it's visible to you um, during the interview process or in your current situation. So you can either try to make change and call it out, which can be dicey and scary. I get that. Um, but at that point, you know, it's, it might be worth 
either doing that or finding some place where you know you're going to be appreciated and celebrated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another person asks about your opinion on so the current situation that demands um, people, many people, to work from home remotely. So and uh, this equals to a new work um, a culture. So what would you say? How how this how does this affect? you know, the way people show empathy to the, to themselves, to the, their colleagues and in the company, how, how can you manage uh, this with people working uh, in different different points of, of the same country or even different uh, different yeah. country? You know, it's, it's hard to demonstrate empathy in pixels, right? It's, you know, especially when it's text. I mean, I don't know if you've ever gotten a text and you're like, what? Did they did they just do that? Um, so you have to go that extra mile when you're when you're going remote, and I know, right? Um, so you have to go that extra mile. And for for us, it means we have like a Slack channel, and it's not only business related. We have you know a water cooler where we just talk about stuff. Sometimes we post pictures of our pets. We've got a gardening section, a food section. We're foodies. Oh, we're so foodies. Um, so I think communicating on that level, I think, is is really lovely because you get to know the person a little bit better. And you know, like I said, you don't have to be buddies, but knowing someone a little bit more allows you to let your guard down a little bit and, and have those conversations. Um, another thing that we do is we do social events, um, you know, online. With this year, we'd have to do them online. But even though we're remote, we're looking forward to the days where we can get together in real life. Right. And uh, we, they are going to bring us together. Um, in addition to, you know, Instead of you know doing a you know, this long-winded email, we encourage our team to you know, fire up a video and just chat. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and from a team-building perspective, sometimes we'll have happy hour on Friday evening. You know, and let's have a sink a set, and we're going to get together and and we're just going to chat. And it's optional; we're not making anyone do this. But it's the little things beyond just the pure play business, because if you're if you're, that's all you limit it to, you're again losing out on some really beautiful nuances of the of the humanity behind it sure and that comes back to empathy the word that you said often and there's someone do, who asked well actually more comments that he worked as a relationship manager for some projects and at the end you have to solve the conflicts between your team and every everything else that you have um but you have to also keep the customer satisfied and happy too mm -hmm. so what would you say on this um how can you balance both Yeah, I, th I think you have to balance both because if you have unhappy internal employees, imagine how they're treating the customers. And and do you think your your customers can't pick up on that? Of course they can. We've all had customer service experiences where we call into an organization and we know they're having a bad day. Like we just know. And it could be because they don't like their job, but they're having a bad day. But I think it's getting people, you know, to to be comfortable with navigating conflict. It's Conflicts aren't bad. Um, you don't have to resort to name calling or anything terrible, but if you and I have a disagreement, let's talk about it. Let's let's find out where, where our pressure points are so that in the future we can navigate it better. And also, you know, maybe you have some reasoning that I, I'm not privy to because it's in here. Um, sorry, it looks like I'm a movie star here. What's going on? Yes, it does, um, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the way. If conflict doesn't have to be something bad, it can be a start of something new. So opening a door and to conversation. I love that opening a door to a conversation, digging deep yeah. and this just like acknowledging. I think the first step is say, hey, we don't agree. Let's figure out why. Right. That's interesting. There's other questions related to geography and um, internship opportunities for international study uh, students in Canada. Uh, I think those you can maybe um, go directly to Anastasia at the booth. You can mm -hmm. uh, ask all your questions. There's someone also still on this topic of uh, geography that asks, yeah, um, so uh, diversity always wins, but uh, mm -hmm. how would you overcome uh, this gap between some countries? For example, he means Canada and Pakistan, really, mm -hmm. uh, specifically, or India, because most of... Mm -hmm. Canadian companies um, don't seem to like his profile or they don't want to um, progress with his um, his uh, application. What would you say on that? Um, any... I'm going to be strongly op opinionated here. So we have WagePoint India and they are phenomenal humans and incredibly talented and we get to speak to them. Sometimes we stay up late, sometimes they get up early. Um, yeah. And it's really, really great to, to see them. Um, and they love talking to, to everybody and, and you know, 
I think if you're experiencing that from a company, run away. Go, so, go somewhere else because um, honestly, this is not, that's not the kind of experience you want. If you're getting that pre-employment, um, that might be an indicator of what you can expect oh, during employment. Sure. And there are companies who are, will, you know, you know, within the limitations of, of hiring from a, a company standpoint, um, but they can definitely, you know, um, look into what's, what's feasible in that way in terms right. of hiring and um, just make sure that you're treated with respect. Very good. We have um, a salad here. Do you want to ask a question? I, I've invited you on stage. Are you there? Hi. Hi there. We also have Siet. I will try and and see if Siet is available. We need to also uh, finish our conversation soon. Okay. Hi, Siet. Are you there? Hi, Siet. Hello, do you want to ask a question? Oh no. Let's try again. Hi, Sid, you there? Hi, uh, oh. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Do you want to good, ask a question? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm well, good. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, it was a lovely event. Uh, thank you everyone for that. Oh, uh, well, yeah. So, uh, I come from India, but I've like lately moved to Canada and I'm on the uh, um, west side, so I'm into Vancouver and uh, Victoria. So I, so here I could see that. Uh, so there's a lot of, uh, I mean, so there's huge culture, uh, culture shock first of all, uh, and especially I want to focus on the leadership. So I've got a couple of questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Leadership in my part of the world where I come from, it's more of service oriented. But here, what I could analyze in the short span is that it's more of numbers and. Uh, uh, how do you want to go then? Like, what's the profit and what's the loss? So, mm -hmm. uh, but I still see there's a shift happening. Uh, so, just want to understand more on the leadership perspective uh, in this part of the world. Do you have any inputs on that? Yeah, so that's my I, first I, question. Yeah, and I think that the... ask, I'm sorry to interrupt. Would you already, uh, uh, could you already ask your second question as well so we can wrap it up a little bit? Um, in a fast pace uh, so that we can finish on time. Well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Question. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so the second question is, uh, I mean, so that's more, so that's more related to uh, what I do and what you suggest for me to do. So uh, I went to, uh, I've studied technology, but I got into the sales side of IT. So that, so I'm, I'm a sales account manager mm -hmm. and here I'm doing my master's, uh, master's uh, in global management, which deals with international trade and economics and all of that stuff. So here, so again, it's a it's a core program as well. So probably early next year, I'm also looking for an internship. But like, what do you suggest? Like uh, in this part of the world, uh, whether it's more of a technology or it's more of management here. Yeah. Oh, right. There's a, so two really excellent questions. So the sure. first question okay. um, was about leadership and kind of what's what's the style, what's the scoop. Um, so what I'm seeing a very big trend is something that that is called like servant leadership, and this is something that we practice very heavily. Where um, I believe, and and even my my colleagues in in leadership believe that we work for our employees. Um, you know, granted. I am responsible for revenue and keeping our customers and getting new ones. Absolutely, that's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if I'm not supporting my team and they don't feel supported and I'm not giving them the resources that they need to do the, the work um, or coaching them to do better in some cases, you know, that's, that's my responsibility as well. And it's an equal responsibility because we will not make money if they are not in, in a good place. So I think that I'm seeing a lot of um, tech companies specifically practicing this style of, of leadership. Um, you know, we it used to be the work hard, play hard, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what, you know, I think we're getting a little bit tired of that. And we know that we can work hard and have balance and still make money and still do, you know, great work from an innovative perspective. Um, so, so you asked a little bit about internship, you know, where should you go after you do your master's? And, you know, tech is a really exciting place to be. And I think you've got you're going to have options like crazy when you're done. And I'm excited for you. So especially with yeah. your, yeah, especially with you, you've got business background, you've got sales background now. I mean, where you can go, you know, one thing that people do look for for management is, is definitely people management skills. So if there's courses that you can take on that, that would be really helpful. So you can help lead and grow a team. Um, but with your experience in sales, um, you can just as easily transition to, 
marketing, which is always exciting because you you have the that frontline experience of what a customer wants and how do you attract that mm. customer. Um, and and that's a really great way to go. You can go in sales, you know, you just go into maybe a different type of sales role. Um, hopefully, where maybe you're not hunting and gathering as much anymore um, to get those leads. So that's always a better thing. Or maybe even account management and partnership development. Yeah. Those I are other. Things. Sorry to cut you a little oh, bit. Yeah. Let's yeah. try and get uh, Deepanita, another person, and then let's uh, wrap it up. We have already 35 minutes running in our session. Thank you okay. very much. Thanks Let me so try much. Yeah. The Thanks mic so much. Thank you. The next and last person. Let's see. Deepanita, you there? Hi. Good Hi. afternoon. How's Hi. it going? It's so, going fine. And I'm very happy to attend this thing. And this has given me a lot of perspective. So I just relocated to Canada and I'm looking for job opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I was, I have been applying actively and looking for jobs actively. The one mm -hmm. thing that I want to know is uh, when I uh, talk to my interviewer and I let them know that these are my skills, these are places where I've worked in, uh, how, how, how do I make it more interesting? I mean, what is that one key factor that people would be interested in me for that position and not somebody else. Very yeah, good. you know, that's that's good. And I think this is this is what I would be looking for if I was interviewing you. Um, I would like to know what is the impact? You know, I, I know what you do on a day-to-day -day basis because that's probably going to be very clear in your resume. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can articulate what was the positive impact of your work? Um, were you able, so, you know, I see you're a data scientist, were you able to, you know, optimize the data flow? Were you able to uncover trends, clusters of data? Uh, were you able to uncover, you know, data could, that could help the organization scale? Um, what was the desired business outcome as a result of your efforts? And how did you, did you help them get them there? I think showing that not only that you understand the technical challenge, but also that you understand the business impact and can articulate that. Um, um, is is very you know presents a very well-rounded understanding so you've got the tech background and the business savvy and if you're able to present that I think that they'll that will really differentiate you from other other candidates who can say well I wrote this algorithm and that's what I did <laughs> very good got it. Got it. thank you thank you very thank much you. thank you again um, to all our participants please we have a lot of questions and raised hands I'm sorry we could not bring you all up to the stage we tried our best just go to wage points booth now and uh, have your conversations there anastasia thank you so much thank you so much thanks for having me enjoy the rest of the event thank you right. take bye care bye everyone everybody. take care